All right, welcome to the Interaxis channel. Today, I want to talk a little bit about DPIN or decentralized physical infrastructure and a little bit about what that is because it's something you might be hearing about now, hearing about a little bit more in the future. It's actually been around a, a little while uh, and I actually have some uh, in-person experience, some direct experience with decentralized physical infrastructure. So let's talk a little bit about what it is. But as usual, we have to go backwards to discuss what DPIN is and why we even need it. So in the early days, well, first we'll talk about phones. If we go all the way back to the idea of phones or even before that to, to telegraphs, right? There were these wires, the, this infrastructure that had to be set up all over the country, all over the world, these wires that had to go back and forth such that I could send a wire, I could send a telegram to somebody, but the wires had to be physically connecting one person to another. And of course, those wires couldn't carry much of a signal. They, they carried something that resembled Morse code uh, and then someone on the other hand, uh, on the other end, would have to decode what was sent. And then, of course, we had phones, and, and the infrastructure had to be built. But that infrastructure was built mainly by companies that had to raise a bunch of money and had to go physically put phone lines everywhere. They had to physically put them in cities. They had to connect cities. They had to connect countries all over the world. And then someone has to take what is on the the phone line and actually put it inside your house. So that moved forward. And of course, phone lines can carry a certain amount of data, a certain amount of information, but they're really good for carrying voice data. So then we had the early days of the internet. And if you'll remember the early days of the internet, you would connect your computer to a phone line and you would have to use a service like AOL or Prodigy or CompuServe or something like that to actually dial up. You would, you would hit a button and your computer would dial a certain number and there would be these awful screeching sounds with those, which those of us that were around can remember uh, really vividly when we hear them, it sounds an awful lot like a fax machine. And then you were connected via one of those providers. And it was because those providers connected via the phone lines. But what we found, or, or what we know is phone lines were not good enough. They, they could not carry the amount of data we needed on the internet to make the internet what it is today. We could, you couldn't move video. You couldn't move information fast enough. You couldn't move enough information fast enough. And if, if I was using the phone line in my house, then no one could use the phone. Or if someone picked up the phone, then it interrupted my internet connection. So all these companies knew that in order for us to utilize the internet the way we needed to and the way it could be and, and realize what the internet could be, we needed much faster uh, internet speeds. We needed much faster connection. So they started laying fiber optic cable all over the country. They laid it along railroad lines. Uh, if you go from country to country, they actually laid it at the bottom of the ocean. So there are these monster fiber optic cables inside these big pipes. They, they go across the ocean, and that's what's carrying our internet data all over the world, right? Eventually, we, you know, we, we at the same time had cell phone data. So cell phone towers are everywhere, and the, you, know, the, you have these big towers, or you can put uh, uh, cellular uh, connections, cellular apparatus on top of buildings, and you pay rent to the buildings. But the companies that had to lay all those out, uh, you know, obviously had to have a tremendous amount of money to invest in that. And they are the, the backbone of the Internet. They were laying out the, the backbone of the Internet, these fiber optic cables uh, and now, you know, kind of mobile phone or, or mobile operators. And that has kind of converged because we have the likes of 5G where I can send Internet data over 5G. And it's remarkably fast, much faster than the Internet was 10 or 15 years ago, even over fiber optic cable. Uh, and, and of course, we all use Wi-Fi. So that gets me to where D-PIN or decentralized physical infrastructure sits. And D-PIN is basically uh, saying, look, kind of like we, we saw with DeFi, decentralized finance or, or crypto. It's the idea that if I have my money inside the current, uh, inside the current banking infrastructure, and I promise I'll get to the, the D-PIN part. If I have my money inside the current banking infrastructure, and I want to send it to another bank from one bank to another. Now, even though my money is digital, I have to ask permission of my bank. Hey, please, can you send money over here? And that is the same process, whether it's a check or a debit card or a credit card or a wire or a Venmo or Zelle or anything else. I'm still asking permission of the, of the banks. I'm still asking for them to use their rails that they've built. And I'm still asking for them to do it during banking hours. And they still have the ability to to tell me either yes we will or no we won't we don't like your transaction adam we don't like that you're you're you know trying to gamble online we don't like that you're trying to invest in crypto uh, we don't like that you're sending money to that particular person therefore we're going to stop it because we're the ones who control these particular lines 
Now, many people are saying this. the same is true of internet infrastructure. And of course, when I, what I talk about a lot, Bitcoin and blockchain, decentralized finance runs on, runs over the internet. So it's still highly reliant on the internet and on those internet providers, those internet backbones. And that internet backbone, of course, can be the fiber optic cables that go all over the world. It could be Wi-Fi, it could be 5G, whatever it might be. I'm still reliant on those car- on those carriers. I have to get Wi-Fi somewhere. Now, the, and, and those carriers obviously make a profit, and they deserve so because they are the ones who who laid the infrastructure. They took they they made the investment in the infrastructure. So where does D pin sit? D pin basically says, okay, I can have you know some uh, little device here, and my device is going to connect to this device, and it's going to create a little mini network. Okay, and there could be another device here and another device here. And these are all going to create uh, what is sometimes referred to as a mesh network or some other type of network where they're all connected. Now, if they can move data back and forth and that data can be money, that data can be messages, that data can be whatever we want it to be. And this doesn't necessarily go over these traditional big uh, Internet lines. They can just be interconnected and you start adding more and more of these and you end up with eventually something that resembles the internet, especially if you have enough of them in, you know, relatively tight spaces that you can have redundancy, that if power goes out in one place, uh, um, that power goes out to one of these, you still have enough infrastructure to keep going. But just like we saw with Bitcoin, just like we've seen with other crypto assets and crypto networks, you have to give people some sort of incentive to connect one of these devices in their house or in their office or wherever they might have it you have to have some um, incentive for them to connect it and create this network. And that incentive, of course, now we know of as cryptocurrency or crypto assets. So you can pay people in crypto assets to, per- to purchase these boxes, to take that risk, uh, to buy the boxes, to, to, um, to, to put up that capital, to connect it to electricity. They have to pay a little bit for electricity. But they're creating this network, and this network can be all over the city, all over the country, all over the world. And if enough of these are connected again, it basically recreates the internet. And we are we are seeing these being used to, uh, you know, actually create Wi-Fi hotspots. We're seeing these actually used to create 5G networks. So you could connect your phone, you could be on your phone and be on 5G networks, and it's not necessarily you know, fiber optic cables carrying internet that have these huge towers on top of buildings that you're connecting to, you could be connecting to one of these kind of mesh networks. Helium is one uh, that we know of. We've seen Akash network. We've, we've seen some others that have been built and they're basically building out a different version of the internet, but they're paying individuals to go basically create the network. And in so doing, what they're saying is you don't have to pay uh, AT&T or Comcast or one of those other providers, you can create your own network. You can join those networks. If I had one in, in this building, I could have people pay me if I wanted to, to uh, be on my network instead of paying for, you know, other internet providers in the building. But remember, I'm also getting paid to create the network and, and run traffic around. And I might be getting paid based on how much data moves back and forth. Uh, I could be getting paid b- based on how many other um, how many other devices are in the area. So there, if there are a whole lot of devices in the area because there's a lot of demand and we're sending a lot of data back and forth, we could get paid quite a lot in, in crypto assets. Um, if, if I'm in a pretty remote area, it might be really hard for my device to connect to other devices. And so maybe I'm not getting paid quite as much. If I'm the only devices in the area, and let's say there's a stretch of highway uh, in the middle of the country, in the middle of Texas or something like that. And I've set up all these devices such that most people wouldn't be able to get coverage, but now they can. I might be getting paid a tremendous amount of money because I'm the only game in town. All right. So that's a little bit of decentralized physical infrastructure. Now you might go, why Why are people going to do this? How are they, they going to like it? Well, you've probably, you've been doing this for a while. We've all been doing this for a while. If you use Google Maps or if you use Waze or something like that, they're actually collecting data based on your phone moving up and down the highway based on where you're going. They're, de- they're determining from that how many people are, are slow and what the average speeds are and what the best places, what, what the best ways to go somewhere. So we've been providing this data, but we've been providing it to large companies so that they can use it for their own purposes. So Google can use it for their maps or Waze can use it for their maps and tell you the best way to get to work or the best way to get to school or the best way to get, get home. But now the idea of deep in is 
you can help, I can help, we can all help create the infrastructure now. We don't need a huge company like AT&T or Comcast or, or, any, or, or you know, T-Mobile or Verizon or something to set up the 5G networks or set up the Wi-Fi networks. You and I can purchase some of these boxes. We can set them up. Uh, we, we can configure them uh, hopefully correctly. And we can get paid because other people are going to use the network. So that's a little bit about what decentralized physical infrastructure is. Again, you're going to hear more about it. There are going to be people that are making a tremendous amount of money. We've seen it with the Solana phone where you can have the, the Solana mobile phone and actually be providing um, providing information back to the network, back to Solana, you know, based on what the traffic is like, uh, the, the physical traffic in the car, and based on what the data traffic is like, um, what's happening in the area. You can provide weather information. You can provide all sorts of information based on where you are, ba based on the, the data that, that needs to go back, the demand for that level of data. You can actually get compensated for that. So that's a little bit about something you're probably going to hear more about. You're going to hear more about these tokens like Helium and Akash. Uh, you, you're, you're going to see more networks. I know T-Mobile has partnered with Helium such that you can get really, really inexpensive uh, 5G wireless plans uh, utilizing the Helium network. Again, because the, the people on the network are already getting compensated in, in crypto tokens and crypto assets. And you are not going to have to pay very much because someone didn't have to spend billions and billions of dollars to build out a network. So again, a little bit about decentralized physical infrastructure or DPIN.